All right, so we've got the humerus and shoulder girdle, and we are going to <clears throat> start talking. Um, we're going to skip these objectives, and we're going to continue into the AP external rotation. Um, anatomy review, so this is just review. Um, external rotation, look at the way of the position of the hand, and then also on that external rotation, look at your epicondyles here and here. You're gonna wanna bring, um, you're gonna wanna bring those parallel to the image receptor, so they're gonna be parallel to that image receptor. Um, review this, keep this image in mind as one to um, be able to label. It will show up again. Um, anatomy review one more time. Um, keep this image as an image to um, be able to label and um, understand what A is, the sternoclavicular, B, the sternal end, C, the body of the clavicle, D, the acromion end, and E, the acromion clavicular. <clears throat> So AP scapula anatomy, once again, this image, you're going to want to make sure that you know this image and be able to identify and label everything. Um, e as the, the medial border or vertebral border. F as the inferior angle. Um, D here is a rib, basically. You're, you've got um, C is the notch right here in the scapula, B is the spine, H is the glenohumeral cavity, A is the acromion, G is the ax axillary border or lateral border. <clears throat> Your lateral scapula um, your central ray is perpendicular, so there's no angle on it. You've got um, two different positions you can put your patient in. Um, PA, this is showing PA, or you can also do an AP scapula. They're going to look the same um, as far as the image. It's going to create this Y. Make sure that you get the inferior angle of the scapula. Um, so... This is a good picture as well to keep in mind to be able to label. Um, you can find this image in your book, so you're going to want to reference it back so you know um, what A, B, what D is, E, and then what C is. So make sure you use this as a labeling picture. Inferior superior axial shoulder. Um, this is another picture that you're going to want to make sure that you can label. Um, a as the coracoid right here, so coracoid, D is the acromion, B is that glenohumeral joint, um, and then C is the spine of the clavicle. <clears throat> Proximal humerus, so external rotation. Once again, external rotation, the hand is what's going to be most important to make sure that you have that external rotation. Your epicondyles, once again, they're parallel. So here and here, running in this, uh, this direction, parallel with that image receptor. You're going to see the greater turbicle in profile, and the lesser turbicle is going to be anterior. So this is your lesser turbicle anterior, and then this is your greater turbicle in profile here so you can see your greater turbicle. Uh, we will talk later about it, but <clears throat> your centering will change on your shoulder for your internal external. Um, in the clinic site, in the clinic site, you're going to be um, opened a little bit wider, maybe a little bit more anterior, um, a little bit more superior and inferior because you want to include the entire clavicle, um, a little bit of the vertebral bodies here because you want to get that um, sternal uh, clavicular joint. So you're going to want to image all of that. We'll talk about that a little bit later as well. So your internal rotation, take a look at the hand here. So the back of the hand is placed on the hip. Your um, 
epicondyles are um, laid over top of one another, so they are perpendicular, so one here and then one against the board. So it's coming in directly to the board, so perpendicular to the IR for the epicondyles. Your greater turbicle is anterior, so your greater turbicle moves here, and then your lesser turbicle lays in profile here next to that uh, glenohumeral joint, um, points in basically in profile towards the, the ribs there that you can see. And once again, as we talked about, you're going to be open a little bit more side to side, you want to get the inferior angle of the scapula and then you want the entire clavicle to the SC joint um, to be included. Okay, so <clears throat> neutral rotation. In that neutral rotation, that hand, the palm of the hand is against the thigh. Your epicondyles form a 45 degree angle to the to the bucky. So what that ends up doing is neither the greater turbicle or the lesser turbicle are in profile. So neither one is in profile. They're basically both are anterior here. Epicondyles 45 degrees, neutral rotation. Once again your collimation is going to be opened a little bit wider. You want to include the inferior angle, and then you want to include the rest of that clavicle to that um, SC joint. These three images here, A, B, and C, give you side-by-side -side images of your shoulder. So this one is, they are all AP, so all of them are AP positions of the shoulder. This one is an <clears throat> external rotation, okay? So external rotation, internal rotation, and neutral, okay? So just make sure that you know what each one of those are. And once again, it would be called AP shoulder external rotation, AP shoulder internal rotation, AP shoulder neutral rotation or in the neutral position. So make sure that you know the greater turbicle in profile, the lesser turbicle in profile, and then neither the greater nor the lesser are in profile. Uh, moving on with our exam history, this should be review for everything that we've done. You're going to confirm the patient name, the date of birth, and the order. So keep in mind that when you pull them, uh, when you call them the first time, you're just calling them uh, by their last name, and then you're going to verify on their wristband, bring them to the room, have them state their name and date of birth as you look at the the wristband and then verify the order. Um, you always want to note the area of interest, uh, the location of pain, pain scale um, 1 to 10 uh, for a pain scale. Um, ask or look to see if there are any contusions, lacerations, if they have any immobility. So you want to ask them, can you move your shoulder? Can you raise your arm? Um, that way you get an idea or a sense of what they're able to do. Um, was there any injury? Um, how and when? So how did it happen? When did it happen? Any previous injuries or surgeries? Um, that's all part of your history. And then we've got the three W's is what we've always talked about as far as what, when, and where. So um, what's wrong? Where is it wrong? Can you show me? Can you point to it? Can you tell me about it? And then when did it happen? Why are you getting the x-rays today? So why did the doctor send you? Once again, the pain scale, 1 to 10. If injured, how did it happen? So how did it happen and when did it happen? 
any kind of swelling, dislocation, um, stitches basically, any history or previous uh, injury or surgery in, in, in that area so you know if there's anything as far as staples that are going to show up in the image, um, what kind, where, and when. And if no injuries, ask, is there an, are there any diseases, arthritis, uh, osteoporosis, cancer, etc. This is going to help you determine what your patient can and can't do. <clears throat> so preparing the patient, you're going to remove the jewelry from the area. So make sure that you check for necklaces. Those are going to lay over the, the neck. Um, you want them out of the way because you need to image that um, SC joint, so the sternoclavicular joint. Long dangly earrings will have to come off. Um, you can ask, you don't specifically have to say, do you have any nipple rings? But you can ask, are there any, do you have any piercings in the chest? If you do, can you remove those? You want to remove any clothing above the waist that may have artifacts um, and then provide the gown. Buttons, um, even the plastic ones on the gowns are going to show up on your digital uh, digital image. Um, you want to make sure that zippers are um, out of the area of interest. Anything with decorations um, on the shirt, if they leave the shirt on. Um, you always want to remove the bra. Um, a lot of your text, working texts are just going to have them pull the bra down to the shoulder. I like to go ahead and just remove the bra. That way you have no artifact in any of it. Um, heavily starched dress shirts. This is mostly for men with the collars. Um, those will usually show up. So just go ahead and remove the outer shirt. If they have a t-shirt, usually that's good to go ahead and let them um, leave the t-shirt on and image. Um, keep in mind if the patient is does have an injury, it may prohibit them from removing the gowns. So just be careful and mindful of that and then always 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 um, shield everybody um, you can go natal shield them uh, and protect them <clears throat> so technical considerations with the humerus and the shoulder girdle you're going to have a medium kv with a grid you're going to be about 70 to 80 and a non-grid you're going to be 65 to 70. this one here is the one that's going to be used the most so with a grid 70 to 80. Um, we always talk about that you use a grid with a part that's over 10 centimeters so when you're doing the shoulder it's generally going to be 10 centimeters or greater so that means that it's going to require the grid Okay, so you have a high MA and a short time, a uh, small focal spot, a 40 inch SID, unless you're doing AC joints, and then you're going to use that 72 degree or 72 inch SID. <clears throat> um, if you're using AEC, select the center cell, um, so just the center. Um, Sorry, if AEC select center cell not recommended, um, just be mindful of how the patient is going to be uh, positioned over the cells. So um, you may not want to select just the center cell. Um, it, may, it may be more than just the center. So expose on expiration. Um, tell the patient take a deep breath in, blow it all the way out. Don't breathe, don't move is the best thing to say. So once again, I'll position my patient, put him up there, take a deep breath in, blow it all the way out, don't breathe, don't move, and then make the exposure. Radiation protection considerations, as you can see, there's a shield on the patient here. When you're doing something like this, as far as this inferior superior, you can lay a full shield along that patient. You just want to make sure that it's not coming into your uh, field of view, into your um, area of interest. Um, close collimation is what you're going to want to use. And then um, either that small shield or a full length shield um, to protect the radiosensitive, uh, radiosensitive organs. So projections of the humerus, 
Um, you can have a patient position either upright or supine, always dependent upon the pain level and then what the patient is able to do. Your receptor 11 or 14 by 17 is going to be lengthwise in the bucky. And then 11 by 14, no grid for small patients. Normally, um, what, they're, what, what you're going to do since you have DR, so you have a digital, digital receptor, is it's one size, so it's not necessarily going to be 14 by 17 or 11 by 14. It's going to be one size, and then you're just going to position your patient and then um, go ahead and collimate to your area of interest so um, that you're including the shoulder joint and the humerus joint or the, the elbow joint. Um, suspend on expiration, take a deep breath in, blow it all the way out, don't breathe, don't move, and make your exposure. So positioning of the humerus, you can see here that um, they've got a routine here, but usually the routine is AP and lateral. These others here are um, specials as far as depending on what the patient can and cannot do. Um, <clears throat> and we'll talk about those. So positioning of your humerus, um, you can do them supine or erect. You want to abduct the arm, abduct the arm away from the, the body just a little bit. Um, the palm is going to be facing up. Your epicondyles are going to be um, parallel with that image receptor. And then you're going to be centered at mid-humerus. Mid Include the head of the humerus and the elbow joint. So you need the, the humerus and the elbow joint in the image. Um, if you clip one or the other, just go ahead and make sure that you include another image to show that other joint. <clears throat> AP humerus projection, like we talked about, you're going to include both the shoulder and the elbow joint. Your central ray is to mid humerus. Your humerus is parallel to the image receptor, so this humerus is parallel to this image receptor. So you're talking the 17, the long part is here, and then your short part, the 14, is up here. Okay, so slight abduction of the arm, so you want it away from the body just a little bit. Like this one here, you can tell it's away. This one here, I would move this hand just a little bit more away from that body. Um, you'll get a better picture that way. Supinate the hand and the epicondyles are parallel to the image receptor, so parallel to that image receptor. Make sure your marker is up here in the corner out of the light or out of the image um, <clears throat> out of the area of interest and you will be good. So evaluation criteria, um, this marker should be right up here um, as we talked about. So you want it in that corner. Um, you want the entire humerus demonstrated, which you have the entire humerus because you have this um, elbow joint and you have this shoulder joint. So this is all that's included. You do not need to include the entire clavicle because we're just looking at the humerus. The clavicle is for the shoulder um, image. You don't need to include the entire scapula either. It's just the humerus, but you need both joints, the head of the humerus and the elbow joint. So you want to see your greater turbicle in profile, which you see that greater turbicle in profile right there. Medial and labrador epicondyles are in profile, which is right here and right here. So this is well positioned because they are in profile. So that is a true AP um, <clears throat> humerus. Lateral, medial, and medial lateral humerus projections. <clears throat> So this is your lateral humerus. You can tell it's your lateral humerus because your epicondyles are now um, perpendicular to that image receptor. So they're going right into that image receptor. Same thing with this one. They are perpendicular to that image receptor, just like the central ray is perpendicular to the image receptor. The marker is up here in the corner out of the way where we want it to be. So dorsum of hand is against the thigh right here. The dorsal side of the hand is against the, 
the thigh. You're slightly abducted away from the body, so you slightly abduct the arm, and then central ray to the mid humerus. Uh, this is in a recumbent position, so rotational lateral. Epicondyles are perpendicular, so they're showing perpendicular right here. <clears throat> You're still mid humerus. Your um, light field is opened up to include the humeral head. Uh, you're also going to pick up the elbow joint. You can look at the hand, it's rolled into, and the dorsal side of the hand is against the thigh. Your marker would go right here um, on the tabletop, so out of the area of interest. And right here you've got the evaluation criteria which any of these evaluation criteria images you're going to want to make sure that you understand everything that's on there because that's going to help you in your critique exam to evaluate any image that comes along so you want the entire humerus which they've got the entire humerus the lesser turbicle and profile which you have <clears throat> um, right here you can see the lesser turbicle and then your epicondyles are superimposed so this right here is su is the superimposed epicondyles um, and then exposure factors um, also with this you should be able to know what you're seeing right here because this is a lateral elbow and then be able to um, according to the images to label be able to label everything but the little circle in the middle the dot those are the superimposed epicondyles so you know what those are lateral medial um, and distal humerus for trauma position so this is um, the distal portion of the humerus you're still in that um, so it's a lateral humerus you're in a 90 degree angle with the the forearm if at all possible so the elbow is in a true lateral uh, and, and then your humerus is going to be in the true lateral so basically you're imaging this much of the humerus so the distal part of the humerus and your image should look just like this as long as you get this patient in this position. Keep in mind they may not be able to, so you're just gonna have to be gentle and, and do what the patient can do, um, depending on the amount of trauma that they're in. So this image right here is what was taken before. So mid and distal humerus is what you're looking for. Distal two thirds of the humerus is demonstrated, which is what they have. 90 degree perspective from the AP projection. So your elbow in that 90 degree um, position, your epicondyles are superimposed, which we have right here. Okay, and then keep in mind anytime you have this, that's the superimposed epicondyles exposure factors and then keep in mind that this is going to be up here so when you turn this image in your image is basic this is going to read correct but your humerus is going to run this way with your elbow with your elbow and your forearm going off this way. So we would never turn it in the way this image is. We would always turn it in into an anatomical position. <clears throat> so horizontal beam, transthoracic, lateral humerus for a trauma. You're going to demonstrate the entire humerus without rotation, or at least um, if you've done this, uh, um, and the patient's able to hold this, then when you do this, you're just looking at the um, proximal portion of the humerus, not the entire proximal and distal portion of the humerus. Um, <clears throat> but if, if you have a patient that can stand like this, you're going to go ahead and get the unaffected arm out of the way. It's easier to put it up over top of their head, but they can raise their arm out in front of them. Um, as much as possible. So move the unaffected limb out of the way, raise it over their head if possible. Central ray to the mid aspect of the humerus, which is the mid aspect of the humerus here. They're going to get the entire humerus. And then your breathing technique is recommended because keep in mind you have the ribs that lay in here, um, this side and the other side, 
as far as ribs. Um, and then you need that um, technique of breathing to blur those ribs out and image that humerus through the other side. So if they can't drop their shoulder, <clears throat> if they can't drop the injured shoulder, so this shoulder they need to drop, this shoulder they need to raise, let's say that they can't do either one of those, you need to angle your central ray 10 to 15 degrees cephalid. So instead of coming in perpendicular, you're going to come in at this angle, 10 to 15 degrees, to prevent superimposition of the shoulders to be able to image that um, humerus that's against the image receptor. So your horizontal beam transthoracic, this is what this humerus looks like. You've got your elbow joint here. You've got your humeral joint here, so you have both of them. You're seeing the, the fracture right there, so that arm's not able to move. So this may not be a true in a true lateral position because they can't move. They're not going to be able to move their lower arm because it's going to cause too much pain. Just make sure that you mark it as a cross table. And then, once again, this image would not be presented this way. Um, in this fashion, you would actually rotate this image and this would be the top up here and this would be the bottom of your image here. And that's how you would send it over to the radiologist. So AP projections are the proximal shoulder and humerus. Your patient upright or supine dependent upon the pain level and what the patient's able to do. Uh, 10 by 12 image receptor crosswise in the Bucky. Um, so you're going to collimate to um, approximately 10 by 12 because your digital image receptor is going to be a large 14 by 17. Once again, you're going to suspend it on expiration. So take a deep breath in, blow it all the way out. Don't breathe, don't move. And that's when you're going to make the exposure. So our shoulder non-trauma, our basic is um, the AP external rotation, AP internal rotation. And then you have um, alternate uh, third view, which is your scap Y lateral, which is either AP or PA, your inferior superior axillary or the Gracie method. So when you're comping in the clinical sites, all you're required to do is internal and external. The uh, third view out here, you're not going to be graded on it, but you're going to have to do that image um, because that patient is yours and you're comping on that patient. The text should only grade you on the two AP, external and internal, not on the comma or the alternate third view. If you miss this image, they should not fail you for it. They should only grade you on the internal and external. Also, once again, we have specials, so the inferior superior axial, the Lawrence method, um, PA transaxillary projection, the Hobbs method, inferior superior axillary projection, the Clements modification, um, the Gracie method, posterior oblique, and then the tangential fisc. These are all ones that we'll talk about, but we just need you to be exposed to them. Um, they're not ones that you're going to have to comp on. I'm going to end right here, and then I'll do another video um, to continue this.